And now, the first alert storm team, live from the 13 Now Digital Desk. This is Tropic Topics, sponsored by Peden Heating and Air Conditioning and Mariana Toyota. Welcome to Tropic Topics. It's week nine, or episode nine. I don't know how we're actually titling this, but technically both. Technically, <laughs> technically it's both, according to Kristen. And uh, unfortunately, we are approaching peak season, as you can see there on the lower part of the screen, highlighting exactly what I just said. And that is because we're in August, and August is usually when we see our activity pick up. It's nothing to really worry about too much at this point in time, um, but there are a lot of scary figures at this point in time when you're thinking about the rest of the season. So uh, climatologically, just meaning that per usual, we are used to seeing 90% of our activity happen past this point in the season. So all of the stuff that we have seen thus far is really like the cherry on the Sunday. It, it is very, very little of the activity has actually happened. Most of most hurricane seasons happen from this point forward. So that's something to keep in mind. We've had a nice snooze, and uh, I think I read yesterday, I believe I mentioned it on air too, um, we haven't had a this quiet of a period since the beginning of July, since 2008. It's been that long uh, since we've had this nice little lull in July. So happy for the nap time that has happened in the tropics and very, very thankful for it because if you think back to last year, we had Hannah already at this yeah. point in time, which was the first landfalling hurricane of uh, in the U.S. anyways of the 2020 season that had already made landfall in Texas. And we had Isaias. And it already happened last year yeah, at this point in time. Yeah, went through my part of town. Yeah, that's right. I was in Baltimore for that. I mean, it passed through very quickly, but it was it was a strong one. Everyone hated that storm. Yeah, because yeah, we it. had to say Isaias. <laughs> you know how many times I practiced I that? I to, like, reprogram it in my weather brain. reel, actually. Is it? Yeah. It is, nice. actually. Yeah, I believe it is. Yeah, uh, I, and I'm absolutely positive that the majority of our viewers still can't say Isaias, Isaias. Isaias. which I don't blame you. We made jokes about it. I had to look I it up before. I, I mean, I think them. the first time I came on air, I was like, Isaias. And then I was like, <laughs> mm, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> Anyways, let's get right into it. Uh, what we're going to be talking about is the typical August setup. We're going to be talking about our typical timeline here. And to start things off, why don't we start with some August hurricanes that are rather notable. And every name on this list should be notable to you all. Andrew, obviously, probably top of the charts there, uh, was peak category <laughs> of a five and made landfall as a category five. Um, one of the four landfalling cat fives in the U.S. Can you name the others? You can name one, at least, right? One of the fives? Yes. Michael? Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Cookie for Kristen. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Yes, that is one of the cat fives. The other two being Camille and Labor Day. Those were the other two category fives to make landfall in the U.S. So Andrew was an August hurricane. Uh, that always strikes me, too, because Andrew, obviously, the A name Storm, in 92 in August, yeah. and it was late August before they even got the first storm of the season and then it's a category five so uh that's you know that always strikes me as a bit see. odd <laughs> yeah it's a bit odd uh Katrina obviously also notable in this area too uh and if you think back the the quint the I don't know let's see here um trying to think of the right word no, it's, it's not coincidental coincidental oh I can't even say that <laughs> um no it is the Irony or ironic? No, it's not ironic. You could just coinky dink? Yeah, whatever. I guess <laughs> cool fact. We'll go with cool fact. If you look at the cone of uncertainty back in 2005, doesn't seem that long ago, at least to me anyways, 2005, we would have been in the cone of uncertainty here in Panama City when once it became a major hurricane. So just the range that we have come since 2005 in hurricane forecasting is is really unbelievable so if you go back and you look at katrina path cone cone of uncertainty whatever you do um, you'll see that when it was in the gulf of mexico panama city was in that cone and in today's world we would have never been in that cone 
uh, it would have always been off to our west. So uh, that should bring at least some kind of security to hurricane forecasting and how much further we've come just since 2005. So, you know, about 16 years we've made that much of an improvement on forecasting. And then obviously Laura last year, Harvey and Dorian also big impacts for August hurricanes. Um, Harvey, I don't think most people realize, made landfall in Texas as a Category 4, mm -hmm. uh, then made another landfall as a tropical depression in Louisiana. Um, and I, I don't believe that most people think about Houston, but Houston really was just rain bands. Uh, didn't have a whole lot of impact from the actual wind of the hurricane. It was just a really, really slow-moving system, and that's evident by it started August 17th, and it ended <laughs> September 3rd. Yeah, so, and most like of that was, of yeah, and most like of that, that was time in the Gulf, which is just crazy. Uh, and then Dorian, uh, close scare to the U.S., did eventually make a landfall as a Category 1 in North Carolina, um, but obviously much more impactful across the Bahamas than it was in the U.S. So, um, yeah, you'll notice that most of these are also at the end of the sea at the end of the month, which is as you will note, is when we head into the peak hurricane season. Also coming out this week, uh, Grace just did a... Just yesterday. Yeah, just did a package on this yesterday. Um, so, Grace, you want to talk about this one a little bit? This is the updated forecast yeah. from NOAA. Yeah, NOAA just updated their hurricane outlook uh, for the whole season yesterday. So, previously we had... Um, number of named storms was 13 to 20, and now they've upped that to 15 to 21 possible named storms. And this also includes uh, what we had earlier this year, the five that we've already uh, named. Um, so they think that's going to increase just a little bit. They just bumped it up to what was 60% chance of an overactive season is now a 65% chance of an overactive season. And now we've downed the 30% of a normal season down to 25% chance of uh, a normal season. So we're expecting to see um, overactive, well, you know, above average uh, this this season. Now, I wouldn't say hyperactive or anything like that. We still do have, um, they think that because of cooler sea surface temperatures this year, that's kind of may inhibit some factors, but kind of those aren't, that's not the major factor that would really create uh a kind of dead hurricane season here. Um, so, and we're also expecting an enhanced monsoon for West Africa, which will in turn give us lots of uh, tropical waves off of that coastline. And that's just more rain to come to us, more systems to possibly develop. Um, I think also there was and this is all in the background of kind of multi-decadal warming um, that we've been experiencing since 1995 and there was another thing oh also uh predicting <laughs> you know it's hard to keep track yeah no no time. i got you <laughs> um and also we're expecting um low vertical wind shear for uh the caribbean and the atlantic so that is another kind of uh good mechanism that helps hurricanes develop and uh, mature as they come our way yeah very well put uh, i think you summarized that quite nicely um, yeah, I think the main takeaways here are that the NOAA forecast, so it's not the National Hurricane Center, it's actually the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration that puts out these hurricane forecasts, not the subsect of NOAA, which is the National Hurricane Center. So they actually don't do any forecasting. They just collect data and put outlooks out and say, this is what we're watching, that kind of stuff. Um, so NOAA giving an update of the forecast, bumping everything up about one storm, which would make sense. We've had five storms already. We haven't had a hurricane yet. Um, and that's really what stuck out to me is that we haven't had a hurricane yet and we're still forecasting seven to 10. So that's still to come. That doesn't mean that that's gonna hit us. It just means that they're thinking we're gonna have at least seven hurricanes this season and we haven't had one yet. So. Um, it doesn't also necessarily mean it's going to happen. No, no, it doesn't mean that it's going to happen but either. But it is kind of weird to think about. Right, yeah. yeah. Uh, so that is, that's something to keep in the back of the mind. And, and another reason to reinforce that if you don't have your hurricane kit ready and you don't have all of your stuff ready, 
Uh, first of all, shame on you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, not shame on you. Go get it ready. Get get all the supplies and things that you need to, to be able to endure a hurricane. And, you know, at the very minimum, I always say as we're getting into a cone or if a cone uh, is put over us, that you really should be going through the thought process of, hey, okay, hurricane's coming. Uh, this is what I want to do if A impacts here, B impacts here, C impacts here. Um, and what I would like to do if that situation evolves. Because then, if it does happen, you've already done the thought process. There's no thinking about it. You just know that you're going to go into your action plan, and you move out on your action plan, whether that's leaving town, you know, batting down the hatches and hunkering down, as we like to say, or uh, whatever your plans may be. But it's always good to go through those thought processes. Uh, so that's a, a pretty good summary on the updated outlook for the season. And uh, the reason they do the update here is because, you see, we are here. Uh, that is the part of the hurricane season we are entering into. So most activity, again, happening after this date. And prime time hurricane season is about August 20th to October 20th. That is when we see the majority of not only our hurricanes, but also tropical systems in general. After about October 20th, things really start to quiet down. Um, it's not impossible to have tropical stuff hit the U.S. after October, uh, the end of October, but we start to see cold fronts come down a little more regularly. Uh, that helps clear things out just a touch as well as start to cool down those sea surface temperatures uh, as Grace was talking about. And that's not really the end all in tropical development. Really sheer and dry air have much more of an impact as we just saw over this last month uh, than water temperatures do because year round the Caribbean can support a tropical system. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, it's around 90 degrees in the Caribbean uh, almost year round, but we don't have tropical systems spinning out of the Caribbean year round. Uh, so that's a good thing to keep in mind uh, as we are going through hurricane season because it's inevitable the first time I mention something about a tropical system, they go, well, what are the water temperatures? Yeah. I'm like, what, what is They're that matter? Warm. Like, if it's warm enough, <laughs> it, that's it. Like, you don't, need, you don't need to worry about it anymore. If it's above 80 degrees, it's warm enough to support tropical system. That's it. That's it. That's all there is to it. Uh, so anyways, uh, let's move forward. We're going to get into the conditions that are out there now. Then speaking of sea surface temperatures, I honestly had even forgotten that this was the next slide. So yay for me for that transition. <laughs> you really, there. Yeah, you really slid that in. <laughs> uh, our Gulf water coming in about 84, 85. And you'll notice those, uh, those currents that are running through the Gulf where the water temperatures are warmer. Um, and always, I like to take a little gander at the Gulf Stream over there, too. You can see that pretty easily on the Atlantic side of Florida there, uh, running up the East Coast to the Carolinas. Um, that's a nice zone that stuff likes to tap into as well. Um, and does kind of act as a defense, uh, interestingly enough, that stuff will latch onto that as kind of a bear clinic zone, even though that's not how tropical systems work. And then it will steer stuff out, which is... Uh, pretty neat that that's just uh, how that all happened. So anyways, I'm just rambling at this point. I don't think we're talking about anything useful. Next. Yes, <laughs> let's go. Let's, let's go to the next one, um, which I don't remember. There we go. Uh, so Kristen coming off the morning show. She's prime on this. So break it down for us. I've only talked about it like all morning. Uh, good. So we'll just continue good. it <laughs> this afternoon. So we're continuing to watch right now. We have two tropical waves developing out in the Atlantic. Uh, the farther west one there, marked by the yellow, is one weak area that we're going to be watching. Uh, it doesn't really have a good chance of development at this time. In fact, within the next uh, 48 hours, I believe the chance is 0 to 10% within five days. goes up to only 20%. So it kind of looks like this system, if anything does try to form, it's going to get sucked away by some dry air and essentially ripped apart. And that's why there's not a very good chance for formation of that system. The one right behind it, you'll notice it's up to a 6 60% chance of formation within five days. The wave itself is actually building in across the western coast of Africa, and it's going to be shifting further west over some time. And we'll watch this one closer. It does have, obviously, a better chance for formation, but I'm still not convinced that it's really going to have an impact on us here locally. It may actually just become more of a fish storm, as in it doesn't really impact anyone. It just stays out over the Atlantic. But both of these right now, an indicator that yes, we are heading into and closer to the peak of the season, 
because we went from basically zero to two very quickly. Yep. And we're probably going to start to see more and more tropical waves just churning and coming off of that uh, western coast and traveling into the Atlantic, which will have to watch very closely but both of these right now do not look to be a big concern for anyone across the United States and especially for us here in the panhandle but there's a couple different patterns that we'll be watching that climatologically in August give way to where those storms could occur if they do actually start to form and have better confidence and structure as they shift further towards the west. Right now we're taking a live look at our water vapor imagery. You can see by the yellow there, a lot of dry air still setting up across majority of the Atlantic. We do have a tut off towards the north just continuing to spin out there as well. Uh, looking towards Africa and as well as closer to the equator, you'll see a lot of moisture. Those are the tropical lows trying to come off, but they're going to have a little bit of a hard time making their way out towards the west because of all the dry air that is still out there, which is why we don't have very high confidence that both of those waves are going to do much at this time. Well put. Yeah. Uh, it's almost like you just spent an entire morning talking about I that. mean, yeah. I might have. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. It's kind of her okay. job. It, <laughs> I mean, it's kind I, of my it, job. Is it your job? Uh, okay. I don't know what else I get paid for. Well. Not that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, uh, that's exactly what she said. I mean, um, and that, yeah, what she said, right? Um, <laughs> copy and paste. Uh, yeah, co copy and paste. <laughs> Yeah, a whole lot of moisture trying to come off of Africa. That is the monsoonal trough that Grace mentioned earlier. That is expected to stay active as we go through the rest of hurricane season. And that's part of the reason why we do have a fairly high confidence, 65% chance of an above average season, uh, is because we're going to continue to just stream moisture out. And eventually, they're going to be moving into an environment that is not just saturated with dry air. Um, they'll move into an environment that'll be much more capable of developing tropical systems. And that typically happens as we head toward, go figure, the end of August and then through the month of September when we see peak season. So uh, that is a really good summary of what is going on out there, the dry air wise. Uh, satellite a little closer to home, you'll notice a nice trough that's situated across the eastern U.S. that has just been plaguing us with <laughs> moisture for the last several days. Um, and if you just keep asking, is it going to rain today? Most likely the answer is, yeah, Somewhere. at some point in time, we'll probably get a shower or a thunderstorm. Um, but the good news here is we are going to kick that trough out. That, that starts tomorrow. Uh, the bad news is, is that uh, onshore flow just comes right in and behind it. And <laughs> we, we don't go, get rid of that moisture. <laughs> we don't really get rid of the moisture. We just get rid of the situation and the setup that has been bringing us the moisture uh, to start with. So we go right back from a trough to summer pattern, just one day to the next. So Classic mm. summertime pattern. Classic, classic Florida. <laughs> classic Florida. That's exactly right. Uh, but another little interesting feature there is a nice little cyclonic spin in the Caribbean. You can see that cyclonic meaning counterclockwise, right? Yeah. Yes, yep. counterclockwise. Um, had to do that in my head. But anyways, that's, uh, that's another little uh, upper level low. It's not a tut because um, it's not anchored to the upper trophosphere, uh, but uh, it is an upper level low, so it is increasing vertical wind shear across the Caribbean, and it, part of reason why the closer wave that has 20% chance, I don't think develops. Um, I just think there's too much dry air and shear in the Caribbean. I just don't see that that's actually going to have um, enough of an environment to develop. The second wave behind it, however, I do believe that we will get an, a name system out of it uh, but I don't believe that it is going to be any impact to the U.S. It's probably a fish storm. Um, if any interest in our watching in Bermuda, I would say watch it very closely because this that's likely where it's headed, somewhere near Bermuda. It's probably going to do the goalpost right through the uprights between Bermuda and the U.S. Um, but Bermuda would have to be on the lookout for that one. Uh, other than that, there's not a whole lot going on. Uh, the Eastern Pacific still cranking out convection and name systems. I think they're on J already. Yeah. Um, not unusual. That's pretty typical. Uh, Eastern Pacific has been relatively quiet over the last couple of years. Part of the reason why we've been so active mm -hmm. um, is because the Eastern Pacific has been so quiet. Uh, and this is a, a, a depiction of not just the dry air, but the Saharan dust that's out there. And you'll notice it's not as colorful as it once was. <laughs> There's far less dust. And uh, the forecast going forward, uh, yeah, far less dust plaguing the Atlantic, which is also why we'll be talking about tropical activity picking up. Um, thankfully, there is 
at least another burst of dust that yeah. is coming off of Africa now along with that wave. So uh, it'd be interesting to see if that wave can actually wrap up and pull some of that dry air in, uh, help it hopefully not strengthen too terribly strong as we go forward. Um, so what's typical in August this time of year? Well, it's kind of the pattern we've been talking about. Um, you think back to Katrina and Andrew and Dorian and Laura, and they Harvey. all, and Harvey, yeah, they all have the paths that are highlighted right here. Uh, stuff that gets moving into the Caribbean, you start to see shear drop off, uh, you see stuff develop toward the windward and leeward islands, and then move toward the U.S., um, and that all starts right there, the main development region. Um, so paths that have taken this A track, Harvey, Laura, um, let's see here. Can I think of any others? I think the Dorian yeah, kind of took that track too. It started on that, and then it jumped ship because yeah. it was like, hey, I want to go to the north of Puerto Rico, not to the south, um, you know, because storms can do that. Um, no, they don't They don't actually get to say any of that kind of stuff. But I feel like I'm talking too much, so somebody else take it. Well, the next path here um, is kind of more of a northward track, and this is all kind of due to that Bermuda High, and the Bermuda High will help steer it track, well, steer it to the north versus track it to the north. Um, but it generally forms in the same area just towards the east of the Caribbean, and the Bermuda High will then push it um, mainly off towards the northwest. And at that point, it kind of has a couple of different options. It may meander its way and across the peninsula of Florida, or it could make its way even further off towards the northeast. Um, and that's what you pulled up perfectly. Yeah, there. <laughs> that's, and that's what I think this this next system is going to do. It's probably going to take that sea track. Um, it may even be a little further east than that. Um, like I said, I think Bermuda is going to have to watch that system. But uh, overall, our pattern continues to favor basically what's been set up here recently, which is troughs coming down into the east, which unfortunately means that uh, if you want dry weather here, you're probably not going to get it. I don't, I don't really see a break in our wet pattern for the next 14 days. <laughs> I know, sad, sad times. Also, I think the heat's coming back too, so um, that kind of stinks as well. So not only is it going to be wet, it's also going to be very hot. <laughs> uh, but anyways, I think that's it. Are we done? I think, yeah, well, I think we're done. Uh, if you have any questions that I haven't seen, you can put them in any of the Facebook uh, commentary sections and we will go through those now. Um, if you have any general questions for us, it doesn't have to specifically to be on this show, although we would like it to pertain to what we've already talked about. Yep. Um, but if you just have any general questions, go ahead and start asking those and, and we'll scroll through those. Uh, you guys have anything you want to add? Um, if you want to follow me on Twitter, my handle's wrong here, Spencer. Oh, geez. I'm going to call you out. <laughs> yeah, it's kkennedy underscore wx. It's okay. Uh, I'll give you, I'll let this one slide. The details. First messed up. <laughs> I mean, you know, we always give props to Spencer. I know. He does a great he does job. He does such a fantastic a job, job to all of this. And, uh, oh, it was Oh, wrong. look at there. I was wrong. Sorry, Spencer. It's not wrong. <laughs> Looky there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, if you don't follow us on social media, that's a good plug. Uh, you should be following us on social media. We provide a lot of interesting and somewhat um, occasionally educational content. We have fun content. We do. We, we chat do have with fun. people. We do. We have fun. We chat with people. We try to be interactive. We're human beings too. So, you know, if We're you go. We're not just weather nerds. No. If you ask us a bunch of the same questions, we'll eventually get annoyed. So. <laughs> Speak for yourself, Ross. I love answering, is it going to rain today questions. <laughs> I always just say, where? Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. Um, I guess I'm the only one that gets annoyed with that kind of stuff. But hey, give it time. You guys. Ross's rants. Yes, Ross's that's, rants. That's another Facebook. <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's a blog coming to you in the future. It's going to be Ross's rants. Uh, I think I'm going to start with the first one will be the misuse of the word monsoon. Um, okay, that, okay. That's, okay. That's, wow. That was that's, a... that's probably going to be my first rant. Or the chance of rain. No, no, no I've, already, I've already done the rant on the chance of rain. It's already uh, been done. It's already been done. But I guess I could do it in a vocal format uh, as opposed to just typing everything out. But anyways, I don't see any I other any questions. Do you guys got any questions? No. Um, okay, Spencer, you got any questions? Uh, not necessarily. Um, 
it's a lot of just mostly um, just worried about what could possibly come here. And, uh, don't be worried well, yet. Don't be worried because Bible. nothing's coming here yet. Don't be worried yet. I yeah. Do, I do want to give a quick shout out to Miss Gloria. I see her in the comment section almost yeah, every Yeah, Gloria's there every yes, week. Gloria. We see you, Gloria. Guys, good afternoon, my favorite weather team. So. Awesome. Aww. Shout out, Miss Gloria. Thank, thank you for, for watching. Uh, yeah, I would say don't you don't need to be worried at this point in time. I mean, uh, we know every season has its risk. Every season, all it takes is one storm, and we've harped on that quite a bit already, which is why you should be prepared. Um, but, you know, the odds of Michael happening are the exact same odds that they were the year we had Michael. So chances are we're probably not going to see a storm like that. But we could. I mean, so certainly there is that. Uh, possibility, but that doesn't mean that it's likely. Uh, in fact, it's probably not likely that we see any tropical activity affect us here directly. Now, indirectly, like Marco did last year, or um, even well, a little more direct impact like Sally did, uh, yeah, that's certainly uh, far more likely than a direct landfalling major hurricane in our area. That's uh, pretty <coughs> unlikely at this point, um, and really in general across any part of the U.S. It's and I know relatively like unlikely. sometimes seeing, you know, an increased uh, forecast from like NOAA or some uh, administration like that can be kind of scary, but I mean, it's only a 5% increase, and it's also, we're like you said, we have the same odds of getting Michael as the year we had Michael, so um, they're just putting that out there because we have new information, we have better information, and they're just trying to keep people more prepared for what could happen. Yeah, Yeah. I mean, uh, if you go back, like me, I'm, I'm a history guy, so I like looking at past seasons and what happened, things like that. Uh, 97, if y'all are ever interested in looking at past seasons, look up 1997. There were 22 uh, hurricanes that year, not a single one of them made landfall in the U.S. Uh, they all stayed in the Atlantic. There was a whole bunch of recurving systems. Uh, so it's possible. We could have a whole bunch of systems and never come close to the U.S. And if we do have a whole bunch of systems, hopefully that's exactly what happens. They just don't come close to the U.S. But um, I'm not seeing any other questions. So. Well, actually, before we wrap up, okay. I want to make sure that everyone watching knows that we do have a new daily newsletter that's going out via our email. Um, so all you have to do if you want your daily weather forecast every morning, it should come out around 8 o'clock in the morning. You'll get that email directly to you with that forecast. Um, it'll have a forecast video with it attached. Also is a breakdown of each day's weather. If you would like to sign up, just head over to mypanhandle.com slash weather or any page related to weather on our website. And you can't miss it. It says sign up here for your daily weather uh, newsletter. So uh, be sure to go over there, sign up. You'll get your forecast to you directly. Also, uh, our StormTrack 13 app, you can access our forecast there as well. And always the website. We're giving you multiple outlets to get the latest weather forecast. So there's no us. excuse to ask Kristen if it's going to rain today. <laughs> you can still ask me that, but <laughs> you'll have it directly in your inbox to wake up to every morning. If you can't watch us um, throughout the morning news or if you can't tune in and, and watch online. That's right. You have multiple ways to get the forecast. You don't need to call the news station and ask <laughs> if you can talk to one of them. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Uh, please, please don't do that. But if, if you feel inclined. Um, what we'll, Ross is saying is he would love to hear from you today. Okay, so give him a call. He needs to rant. His personal cell uh, number is. <laughs> <laughs> he needs to do his rant. Oh, 850. Uh, hey, hey, what, what, hey, hey, what do we do? What are you doing That's over there? The yeah, well, the I know that, code. but I'm just saying. <laughs> like, uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's wrap. Ross is like, let's wrap this yeah, up before they get out let's of Let's get out of here before before personal information starts flying. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, thanks to our sponsors for making this possible. And um, yeah, I think I think we're done. Do I have anything else? Yeah, I'm I'm real let's scattered just, brain. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Rambling. We'll see you next week. Uh, goodbye. All right. <laughs> Bye. Thank you for watching Tropic Topics, sponsored by Peden Heating and Air Conditioning and Marietta Toyota. Be sure to download the StormTrack 13 app today to stay up to date with all of the latest weather information. For more local news, weather, sports, and more, visit MyPanhandle.com.